Kung Fu and Marvel. Last time they did it was Daredevil, technically speaking, and that was pretty awesome. So let's see how this works out. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. The idea of mixing Chinese martial arts and that kind of cinema and storytelling and uh, cultural aspect to a Western superhero sort of genre, I was kind of curious to see how this would work out. I was kind of wondering if it would be something like Fearless or would they go the really heavy CGI route, which is pretty much what they did, but they still tried to do, I guess as respectfully as Disney could in its own way, mixture of Chinese Kung Fu cinema with Western elements. I will say that's probably one of the better bits when those parts are done well. I think that Sumin Yi does a very good job with the choreography and the character. While not being the most in-depth of characters, he does have an interesting enough depth, uh, depth in terms of his origin and his story, his coming to be, that keeps you compelled. Even if he isn't as charismatic of a lead as you were kind of hoping for, is really you're relying off of his backstory, which is very well intertwined with the overall narrative with the editing. And for a movie that's about one third flashback, it does pretty good, except for one key flashback that's missing that I'll come up with and talk about later, because this all correlates with his father and his father's teachings. Basically, after their mother died, the father taught him to be a killer. He's bringing him back into his fold because there is a task at hand. A very, very weak task. And that's actually one element of the movie amongst a few that I actually probably have the biggest gripes with. I sympathize with, with his father. His father's a very well put together character. It's his overall motivation. It's just kind of bullshit. Very hard, if near on impossible, for you to get behind. When you have an element like this, being the key focus of the villain, being absolutely so weak that a five-year-old could see through this. The other issue that I was talking about being the flashbacks. Now, admittedly, a lot of the flashbacks are very well done. When he goes back to the fortress with his father and he sees his old training pole and just the editing through that moment is very akin to the editing through his flashbacks throughout the film, so it's very well done. However, there is a key flashback of when he turns, when he decides to go against his father's teachings and he abandons everything. That is absent. The part of the film that involves the most amount of character development is missing from the overall film. It's mind-blowing to me that they didn't have this in considering how much of the film is flashback. But those are kind of my main concerns with the narrative. It's pretty basic in terms of Marvel storylines. It's almost like Black Panther a little bit in reverse. It's still decent-ish. You know how things are gonna go, but it's still entertaining enough that you're intertwined with the story. And that is because of the characters and the visual aspect of the film. Like I was saying earlier, the fight scenes are a mixture of two different cultures and for the most part, they work out pretty well. The fight on the bus is very good. The fight on the bamboo wall uh, alongside a skyscraper is very, very good. There is also a fight between his father and his mother when they meet, and it is straight up a kind of a lighter version of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It's probably my favorite fight scene throughout the whole movie. For the most part, the fight scenes are pretty decent until the last battle at the end of the movie. There's supposed to be these two armies fighting to, uh, against each other and then there's all these mythical elements that come into it and it kind of parodies itself almost. The fight scenes are not really well choreographed. They're very over dramatic yet very bloodless. There's little weight to them. And then it turns into a giant CGI battle thing, which kind of demitigates the entire premise of what the movie was supposed to be. It also kind of correlates in, into the volume of the movie. I found the movie very quiet. Now, admittedly, I saw it in a normal theater, but I didn't think it'd be this freaking quiet. And also the soundtrack of the film, there are some decent hip hop songs in here, but I, I thought they were gonna go a little bit more with it. There were certain songs that felt like placeholder music, kind of like what they did with Thor 2. A lot of that movie is placeholder music, which is why it's so freaking boring in terms of its music and overall score, but that was, there was a lot of issues with Thor 2. Overall though, Shang-Chi does have good elements in it. I just think that they are not properly executed to its fullest. I think there's way too much story trying to be jam-packed into this movie. I feel like the focus on the father and son element should have been the key element of the story and the entirety of it because there is an element at the end of the film that is just thrown in in the last quarter which feels a little bit 
silly and rushed and it kind of pulls away from it. I wasn't disappointed with Shang-Chi. I think I just was expecting more. When you have an origin character story for a series that has done 12, 15 of these by now, you kind of know what you're in for. Again, it, I feel that I am feeling a slight bit of superhero exhaustion from these kind of above movies. But in the end, I'm still going to give Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings a four out of seven. It's still competent. The fight scenes are pretty well done. The visual aspects of the film are very cool when they're not super CGI heavy. And admittedly, even when some of them are, they're still very visually appealing. But I just feel that they, maybe they should have fine-tuned the story a little bit more, focused on one element instead of so many. And then, I don't know, kind of make the father's whole plight be less ridiculous than it is in this movie. That, that's one of the biggest complaints I have with this movie is that the villain's motivation is just ridiculously stupid. But that's all from me, guys. I hope you liked the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.